Today on Metal Roofing 101, we talk about seven common problems of a metal roof. Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. This is Metal Roofing 101. I'm Thad Barnett with Sheffield Metals. I've got Dave Stubbs with me. Today we're talking about seven common problems of a metal roof. How to avoid them, how to fix them, and what they are. So, Dave, first we're going to talk about oil canning. What is oil canning? How does it affect a roof? Well, oil canning is, is obviously in these areas that, that kind of define and, and shadow out. You can really see the waves in the material. You can see the waves of the roof. Um, and I'm only saying that because it, it could be the material itself, it could be the roof condition um, that depicts that oil canning. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, different scenarios that, that build its case for oil canning itself. Is oil canning completely aesthetic or is it going to damage your roof somehow? It's completely aesthetic. Um, the, the roof is still going to perform. Um, the material is, there's no degradation in the material. So the roof is, is still uh, of high standard. So Dave, is there any way to avoid oil canning or kind of eliminate that possibility? Well, there are some processes that can mitigate some of the oil canning that you see. Um, striations in the panels, um, pencil ribs, clip relief, and those are all instrumental in the, in the field of the panel, um, like I say, to mitigate some of the oil canning. Uh, most of our manufacturers are, are actually executing a waiver form that if you really do want a flat in the panel, you sign a waiver form and you can have that. But we really, really ask that the customer uh, use a striation or, or pencil rib in the panel just to sort of mitigate the condition. Right, and that's in the flat part of the panel. Why does that make a difference when it comes to oil canning? It really just relieves the eye and puts a little bit of stress in the base of the panel or the flat of the panel to sort of migrate the, the oil canning to the ribs and it, visually you can you can barely see the, the oil canning. Right. So if you want to learn more about oil canning, Dave was on a Q&A episode along with Tom Sutherland. You can check that out. So the next topic we're going to talk about is leaking. Dave, uh, how does a roof leak? Why does a roof leak? Well, there several conditions can happen because of your roof leaking. A, it could be a bad installation. It could be a major weather event. You know, sometimes you get some, some rainstorms and your, your roof or uh, your condition is just overwhelmed with the amount of water. What are some common problems that happen with an install that can lead to leaking? The most common one I see is unfinished business. Um, whether they just have not finished the counter flashing, one area got forgot, or the installer didn't quite get there, okay. or maybe their day ended and they didn't finish out. Uh, the other one is on a face fasten panel, the screws themselves. These are really common, and the, the biggest problem with this one is the neoprene washer is, is unprotected from UV, so it will deteriorate very fast. Same way with this one. This side's going to be protected from the UV, and this is going to be exposed and deteriorate. So you might have a roof installed and be okay for a little while, but then eventually you're going to start seeing leaks where these, these fasteners are you know, underdriven or off-center. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, your, your underlayment is, is always your, your, your last hope that, that water doesn't infiltrate your your right. structure or your home or your business. We want this to be properly installed from the very beginning. So the third common problem that we're going to talk about is scratching and scuffing. How does this happen and how does it affect your roof? Well, the scratching and scuffing can be caused by the installer. Um, they obviously, for the most part, have to step and, and get onto the roof to finish out the, the flashing. Traffic is, is a huge portion of it. So if you can limit the traffic, the less scratches that can possibly happen. Also, tools. You know, when the guys are trying to install, they're, they're probably trying to be very careful, but inevitably, gravity does take effect and tools will drop right. and possibly scuff the roof. So if you notice that your roof is scratched or you see scuffing, what are some ways to remedy that? How do you fix it? Well, I definitely recommend getting a, a manufacturer paint pen, um, definitely from the manufacturer to try and fill these areas in with, with the paint pen themselves. If, if you don't remedy it with the paint pen, it can lead to corrosion and degradation of your material. So there are a few different things that can cause your roof to corrode. What are those things? Well, improper cutting, using the wrong tools, uh, any sort of an abrasive blade will definitely cause corrosion. Uh, the handling of the material, uh, if it gets gouged, 
uh, scratched as we spoke before uh, anytime we scratch we definitely want to infill with the proper paint from the paint manufacturer the other part is different environmental conditions and especially I seriously recommend a preventative maintenance schedule like say once or twice a year check out your roof see what see what's going on up there I mean you've made the investment on an expensive metal roof you should maintain it and make sure that it's, it's in good shape four seasons a year so let's look at a couple other examples of metal roof corrosion and this is galvanized steel so what are we looking at here well this originally was a, a scratch and this is a galvanized material substrate and what has happened here is is we have corrosion that's spreading throughout this scratch versus a, a galvalum substrate that will do a, a whole lot less of the spreading. So let's look at a galvalum substrate now. This is steel and it's galvalum, so what's, what are we looking at here? Similar scratch, similar scratch condition, um, but what happens is the corrosion starts and then it subsides. It doesn't keep spreading like it would on a galvanized substrate. And that's, that's really the advantage to galvalum. Yeah. So if I notice corrosion on my roof, uh, what's my first step? How do I fix it? How do I remedy this? Well, identify it and then get with the metal manufacturer. Don't delay that process. They'll, they'll definitely lead you in the right direction. Come up with a remedy and potentially save your roof from some sort of catastrophe. I mean, the roof can completely fail. So this is kind of an interesting topic here. Number five on our common problems is dissimilar materials. What does that mean and how does it affect metal roofing? The similar materials, it can wide range. Um, steel uh, doesn't like a lot of different materials. For instance, copper, uh, aluminum is considered a dissimilar metal. Um, some stainless steels is considered uh, dissimilar metals. So you're opening a window to a huge range of dissimilar materials. And what we're talking here is when those materials come into contact with the dissimilar material, that can potentially lead to corrosion or other problems with the material, right? Well, here's the caveat to that. They don't have to be in contact. They can just be sort of the environmental condition. Okay. We've got some great examples of that coming up. So for this example, we actually have a pre-finished metal roof, but it has copper gutters in it. So what was suggested is the problem here is that the copper gutters, water gets in there, and the splash is actually creating corrosion throughout this entire lineal design and that material is failing. Water splash, um, runoff from a copper pipe, um, all those things can lead into uh, dissimilar metal corrosion. So here's a closer shot of the copper gutter here. What are we seeing here? Well, you're, you're seeing dissimilar metal corrosion throughout this entire line of pre-finished material. You can actually see where it's completely gone. It's just dissolved. The next problem that we see happen with metal roofs sometimes is chalking and fading. What does that mean? As you can see in this visual condition, um, it's degradation of your paint. It'll chalk and fade. And this condition can be measured scientifically by the paint manufacturer to either warrant it or assess where the warranty stops and finishes once again via your, your paint manufacturer and the metal manufacturer as well. So this is a prime example of chalking and or fading. So this is a, a newer roof than the further back condition here. So you can see there is the potential for, for fading. And we have a Q&A episode about chalking and fading with Rob Haddock about this topic. We talked for 30 minutes or something like that about how chalking and fading is measured, what causes it, what are warranty claims like, how does your paint manufacturer and your metal manufacturer deal with the, these issues. And I think we saved the best for last, installation error number seven. Tell me a little bit about this. What happens with installation error and how can it affect your roof? Look, this is the biggest problem that I, of course, run into as a, as a technical rep. Um, installation. It's, it's the thing that we can't necessarily control. Um, we can teach, I can instruct, I can do, spend a lot of energy on, a, on all those things. But when you get a bad install and I think it's fairly obvious, but uh, we have a valley condition that's the edge of the panel is wide open. We have some flashings that are not installed properly. You spend a lot of money on a metal roof and you got a bad install. And it, it's one of those things where it's too bad, but you can, 
you can try to protect yourself with recommended installers, um, properly trained people, properly trained by the manufacturer as far as the install. Um, this is the part that I really enjoy, is to instruct people on how to install, and it really educates the entire industry. So if I have a metal roof on my house, how do I know if it's a good or a bad install, and what do I do if I notice it's a bad install? Well, I think we need to take a step back, and you need to you know, do, if you're going to make that big investment of a metal roof, you definitely want to do your research beforehand. Um, you want to take a look at the, the installer's details that they're going to be installing versus what the manufacturer recommended. Make sure that those things marry up that, and identify the things that, that don't necessarily uh, look the same. So if it is after the install, you definitely want to work it out with the roofing contractor. I think if you can get resolved there, that's the better way to go. Yeah. Uh, if you can't get resolve, uh, potentially uh, a roof consultant can be called in and hopefully you can get resolve in that direction. So these are seven common problems of a metal roof, but there are many other problems that could potentially affect your roof and some problems lead into other problems. So if you want to learn more and you're looking to buy a metal roof or you have a metal roof on your house or building already, check out our free ebook. It's called The Metal Roofing Buyer's Guide from Deck to Finish. It's 120 in, uh, pages of information. We go into great detail about all of these topics. Plus, we have some videos on the Metal Roofing channel here, so definitely subscribe and you can check all of those out. Again, covering these topics. Any questions, you can comment below this video. Thanks to Dave for hopping on the episode today. And uh, anything else, visit SheffieldMetals.com and we'll catch you next time.